going tonight, guys. Come on. All right. Norad's not tracking any snoops in this vector. Shuttle Endeavor's in sleep mode. Okay. Point source confirmed. Whatever it is, it ain't local. Position? I checked interferometry somewhere in Lyra, I think. Uh, Vega? Yeah, it's Vega. It's only 26 light years away. Hey, what's the peak intensity? Coming up. Vega. Vega, man. I scanned it a bunch of times at Arecibo. It was negative results, always. Got it. Reading over 100 jets. Jesus. Pick it up on my... Wait, wait, wait. Who plugged in? Who plugged in? Unplug, unplug. I, I can't see. I can't see. There is nothing worse, guys, than getting bad video. John here, guys. And today we are talking about the AKK FX3 video transmitter. Now, I have tried just about every video transmitter out on the market, and I've went back and forth between using cheaper video transmitters that work well like the Isheen VTX-03 that I used for the longest time and I still recommend that as a good budget solution if you're flying by yourself but if you start to fly with other people or you start racing with other people you need something that's a bit more reliable so I tried the Matek VTX, which was very good. And of course, I tried the very popular Unify Race, which this actually worked very, very well. It has smart audio built in, and it just works. It's like a workhorse. So why is this the only Unify that I now have left? I've gotten rid of all the other ones, and it's because of this connector, the terrible, awful heinous weak ufl connector that should be banished from this hobby for all video transmitters now this does work fine for your receivers because they don't see much moving around or much adjustment or ever a need to pop those off except for rare situations where you destroy an antenna but for your video transmitters these need to be flexible they need to be able to be swapped out and as joshua barwell always says they are not built for that many mating cycles after a few times these little connectors can break they can rip off if you're in a crash they can move they can easily become loose they just don't stay and i was just tired of having bad video not because my vtx was bad but because my stupid connector just wasn't working and for the longest time team black cheap just refused to go to mmcx now recently they have went to mmcx on their unified race which is what i just had in my hand there but i wanted to see was there another vtx on the market that could meet the needs that could have a smaller footprint and that could be had at a lower price point the akk fx3 has almost all the same features and it comes in at like a $19 price point so what's the deal guys as you can see I've been flying this for a while I don't just buy one slap it in fly it for two times and then make a video I've been flying this for a while now I actually only ordered one at first and so I have doubled down and replaced my whole fleet this is only about half of the ones I actually have so I bought at least 10 of these so far and I did have one burn out, but I think that was due to a bad motor that actually burned my um, ESC along with it. And that was the culprit there. So, so far I've been having great luck with these, running them in builds large and small. And that's the other thing I like. I like to use the same components throughout all of my systems when possible. So I use the XM Plus receiver in all my builds. So if I had the opportunity to find a vtx that would work for my micro builds and my full-size builds why not jump at the chance so very quickly let's run down what comes in the box first you get this little instruction manual which has all of the wiring diagrams and your little frequency chart right there next you get your wiring harness um so that allows you to snip snip here connect to your flight controller to your camera and then boom, you're in business. It plugs into this little cable um, harness outlet right there. Now let's zoom this in a little bit. Here's the VTX itself. 
has your um, your plug-in right there for your harness. You also have pads. If you ever want to not use the harness, you can use these pads down here. You have your MMCX connector, which is really, very solidly on there. Your LED readout to be able to see what band channel and power setting you're on. And of course, your button. Now, this does have smart audio built in, which works great. But you do also have the button as a backup. And for those who just don't like to use smart audio, that is available to you. So let's put this back up there and finish. Now, one thing I was reading about the Unify Race MMCX version that a lot of people were not happy about is the fact that it does not come with one of these, an MMCX pigtail, um, but the AKK does. And it's uh, considerably cheaper. It's, it's less than two thirds the price. Um, so, I didn't just go out and buy a ton of these. Like I said, I tried one first before I doubled down. And so far I've been very happy with these. Your MMCX um, just plugs in just like this. And let me change the focus again, guys. Sorry about that. So plugs in just like that. And that is really secure i would never do this with a ufl vtx but look how hard it is to pull it off it just won't pull off in a crash as long as your vtx itself is secured and you can pull them on and off however many times you want now i personally prefer this is the true rc version of the axi antenna i actually really like the luminar better but here this has a right angle on it so you can plug it in and plug it out no problem Let's take a look at the installation of this on an actual quad. Now, here is my Campfire CF1. The review of this is coming out very, very soon. And this is how I mount them, just double-sided tape to the top of the stack. Here's the wiring harness going into it right there. And it just sits on there perfectly. Camera harness comes out to the front. And... If you're not familiar with the campfire quads one your pod just goes on there on top so everything is perfectly inside there very very neatly so what does it look like in another type of frame here is a floss 2.1 that has this installed and you can see that mmcx uh, connector on the antenna right there now this is the luminaire uh, version of that axi and it is on there perfectly great now what is the other significant thing about this vtx well the size of the vtx is 20 by 20 but the holes are in three so what does that mean you could in a full-size stack run your screw through one of these holes and have it anchored down even further sometimes i do that and I still keep the double-sided tape on the bottom for extra good measure. But what does that really mean? It means that you can run that in a micro build like this. This is a full 2020 stack right here. This is actually the Emacs Mini Magnum stack. And that fits on top so perfectly. Now, this is an MMCX um, dipole antenna. So you can run it straight through whatever you want. And you don't have to worry about that getting yanked off of your VTX. And look at what you notice. It is perfectly in line with this stack. Oh, so nice. So what have I noticed about the performance of this VTX? Well, it does have multiple power settings. You have 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, 400 milliwatts, and 600 milliwatts. Now, I pretty much exclusively just run 200 because... Um, typically for my purposes, I'm mostly racing, um, whether I'm practicing by myself or I'm out with a group. And some people may practice on a higher power setting, but I'd like to practice at the same um, power setting that I would normally race on. Um, so I'm getting the same type of video feed. And so that's all I leave mine on. Um, if you're a long range guy, you may want the larger 30 by 30 stack version of this that can go all the way up, I believe, to 1200 milliwatts, which is insane but i'm gonna kind of cut it right here guys if you're looking for a low cost um very versatile vtx that you can use in all your builds big and small i highly recommend this if anyone has been using this longer than me i've been using it probably about six weeks now but if anyone's been using it longer and has had issues please let us let us all know 
we can benefit from that knowledge. But so far, this has been very solid for me. I love the just the kind of versatility that it has to be able to have one VTX go in all of your builds, have it have the great MMCX connector. Uh, it's just, and, and it comes with the pigtail. So for those that run stubbies, you're not left trying to source your own pigtail, you know, like crazy. I love that it has a connector that just plugs in. So if I ever did have a situation where I need to replace this in the field at a race or whatnot, I can just pop another one of these out. I've been keeping a spare in my bag. I haven't had to use it yet, but I could just slap another one in and boom, you're back off to the races. So here's a little bit of flight footage from this past weekend's race where I'm kind of going through some trees. I'm hitting some crashes. So you can see that it is um, holding up to those bumps uh, and, and through going through the trees and gates and whatnot with minimal breakouts. So thanks guys. Catch you next time.